Welcome to ANN in Depth. In this episode, we will talk about truth and publishing. In a world that has determined that truth is personable and completely relative to the person who has that truth, how do you still print books that claim to have present truth? More to the point, how do you distribute millions and millions of books as the Seventh-day Adventist Church is doing with the Great Controversy? A book that was published well over 100 years ago and claims to have the answers that people are looking for. With me today, Almir Maroni. Pastor, you are the Director of Publishing for the Seventh-day Adventist World Church. And in the last episode, we talked about publishing in general, the impact of books, and this project with the Great Controversy. In this episode, we'll talk about truth. So, isn't it a bit arrogant to claim that the Adventist Church has a book that will help people understand the truth? Well, it might seem arrogant, but uh, our beliefs, they are based on a premise, right? And Christian uh, churches are based on Jesus Christ uh, teachings. And he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, or life and truth. So we see Jesus as the truth. And uh, with Jesus, we have all teachings about him, about the Father, because he came to reveal his Father, his character, and his uh, love, mercy, and also his righteousness, his justice. We cannot separate all of them. And part of uh, this characteristic of, uh, of God is his law, the love of love. And obeying commandments is part of that. So what is truth? So it's following Jesus with all your heart, loving God with all your heart, and accepting and uh, practicing all that is included in this belief. Jesus is your Savior, is your Lord, so you obey him, you follow him, you reflect his character in your, in your life. So for Christians, this is the truth. So we try as church to share this truth based on Jesus Christ. If somebody does not believe in Jesus Christ and therefore isn't a Christian, why should they read this book? Well, it's a good question. Because Jesus is the only one that can save if I am in Jesus, I have uh, uh, salvation. I am redeemed uh, by his blood. I am justified. So although we know that there are many different uh, beliefs and, and churches or religions in the world, we believe that um, only in Jesus is salvation. So if you are a Christian, you share this message. And if you are not a Christian, and if you ask, can, can I understand what Christians believe? Our belief is Jesus Christ, his uh, truth, and his uh, commandments, and uh, his justice. So there is no other way. We cannot avoid, uh, we cannot hide Jesus in a corner and try to reach somebody else. Then when we reach, we make friends uh, with this person person, then we present Jesus. I think it's the opposite. You, you present Jesus in your life, in your behavior, in your thoughts, in your words, what you do. Uh, Christian life shares. And as you share with your life, you are also spreading Christ's um, message to the world. This transparency is common, more common in the 21st century. But many of us tried different methods in the past where we would hide the fact that we're Christians. We will hide the fact that we're Seventh-day Adventists. And then we will reach out and get to know them. And then at the right moment, we would present that we are uh, who we are. And it hasn't worked very well because people don't like being uh, tricked. You need to be transparent, transparent from the first moment that you encounter them. You are who you are. And the more consistency they see in your life to do with your beliefs, what you believe, uh, what you believe, what you say, and what you do, uh, mm -hmm. that will have an impact in their lives. Mm 
Yeah. So essentially, it seems to me that you are very comfortable disagreeing with people who don't believe in Christianity or Jesus specifically. So in other words, hey, if you don't want to believe, that's fine. But you're going to die. And there is a chance that you might live forever like Christ did. I don't remember who it was, but I read recently. I can't remember which book, but it doesn't matter. The question becomes, the only question that matters is, was Jesus raised from the dead? That's what the author was proposing. That all the questions, all the philosophical questions, all of the theological questions, all the deep human questions, or even humanist questions, all the rationalization in the world, the most important question is, was Jesus raised from the dead? And I think it's a good place to start philosophically too, mm -hmm. because this would this would change the way that you see Jesus for one, but it would change the way you see the universe. Now there, there is more evidence for the resurrection, says N.T. Wright, than for the existence of the first Caesar in Rome and many other ancient events. So there's plenty of evidence for the resurrection. The great controversy forces you to face head on these questions. Mm -hmm. and the sacrifice of the reformers and the, the challenges to scripture that many different revolutions had over the last 2,000 years. Yes. The book starts in AD 70, where Jerusalem was destroyed, mm -hmm. and it ends in the new earth in the future where this world will be recreated. What impact do you think the book can have in someone who does not believe in truth anymore? It's a good question, Sam, because um, uh, when you study how to reach people's minds, you, you need to find something in common to attract their attention. And as we talked before, um, we try to present um, the book as it is. And if you read the, the first paragraph or if you read the preface, you know that this is a Christian book. It speaks about human history, about the history of religions around the world, especially the Christian uh, Christianity. And um, uh, many people will look at it and say, well, this is not what I want. This is not what I, I would like to, to read. But for some reason, some people, they start reading. Uh, you have met people that uh, tell us different stories, how this book caught their attention, although they were not thinking about the subject or the theme of the book. So I believe, I strongly believe, uh, Sam, that there is a spiritual element in this process. The book needs to be printed and distributed widely we believe as church, based on what uh, the author of the book, Ellen White, says, that she would love to see a wide distribution of this book more than any other book that she has written. So she said, she, she pointed out that the great controversy has a special message for this mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. So the book needs to be distributed. But if you think, no, people don't like this type of subject. They don't read this. They don't look for this. So if you distribute this massively, they will just throw it in a trash bin. So it's correct speaking as a human being. But there is a spiritual element that we sometimes we don't count, which is the Holy Spirit that will draw attention to the book or to the subject, to, to a paragraph, or even to the cover, or even to the back cover of the book. I don't know. The Holy Spirit knows how to present or to transform something in a way that people who are seeking for truth, they will find it, right? So based on this belief that I don't have no hesitation, I have no hesitation to proclaim that the Adventist Church should distribute millions upon millions of this book, because I have seen people's lives transformed by this book, 
even people that were not looking for that book, even people that burned the book and buried the book into the ground, people that had that experience after a while being transformed by the Holy Spirit. So you should count on the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. You, you, you should just abandon your human conceptions of uh, marketing strategies, what attracts people's mind. We have a message to share, and we must share the message. No matter it's popular or people will love it or not, this is the message. And we are supposed to follow this guidance from the Lord, not from, from the church or from us. That's a great reminder, Almir, because mission is a supernatural process. Yes. I've read hundreds of marketing books in my life, and it is important for the marketers to surrender to the supernatural process that is mission. Yeah. We can use whatever methodology we want. Mission is a supernatural process. Exactly. Somebody's conversion does not come because of our methods. In fact, our methods, a friend of mine said this, <clears throat> his name is Oliver. Our methods are to the mission what our works are to salvation. I love that. Yeah. Our methods are to the mission what our works are to salvation. They play a part, mm -hmm. but we don't know exactly how and where. We have an idea. You mm -hmm. are saved by grace, <clears throat> as Ephesians says, and not by works. And <clears throat> as Ephesians says at the end of, of verse 10, you are created in Christ Jesus to do good works. So there's room for works. Sure. But we're not saved by works. Yeah. There is room for methods. But conversion is not from the methods. Right? Our works are to to salvation, what our methods are to our mission. So there is a supernatural process that leads people to to see the books. You mentioned you mentioned mass distribution. I have not seen you promote uh, mailings of the book. Mm -hmm. I see you talk a lot about personally delivering the book to the people that you know. Yeah. What do you think are the impacts of both methodologies? Well, I think the idea of putting somebody in front of other is the best way to go. Or if you have opportunity to meet somebody on your work or going to your um, or in, on your trip, and then you have a book with you. Sometimes I have seen that God allow something to happen to drown the conversation to that particular subject. So you deliver a book. If you have, if you put a book on your briefcase and you go for a trip, for example, something will happen that that book will be uh, used in a contact. Uh, here in North America, they call it divine appointment. Mm -hmm. God is behind. God set the place or the situation for the book to be presented. But I believe in the, in personal distribution. Although I cannot uh, say any word against mailing the book, uh, people are free to to receive or not. Uh, when you mail a book, some of them will be curious, some of them will be uh, mad about that. But you know, I live in this country for eight years now. Every day. Every day you receive lots <laughs> of mailing, and mails, and mails. And what I do, I select what I love, I like, and I throw it, uh, some, of, some of it in the trash bin. So this is the process. This is part of culture here. Mailing things, mailing uh, advertisements and, and products, and this is common here. So we are not using something that people are not used to, right? Although I, I strongly recommend that the book should be distributed in a personal way, I cannot say any word against the method of say, uh, uh, sending the books uh, through mail. Makes sense. How is the project going so far? Well, the project is now being implemented, uh, the distribution program. Um, as you know, um, the project aimed to bring 
uh, the book in over 130 languages. We reached 128, we, and we are in progress. So at the beginning of the project, we, we had the book available in 74 languages. So it was a big jump. Now the books, uh, this book is available in 128 languages. Now the challenge is uh, printing these books and distributing the books. In, 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 in many places, we have had uh, projects of distribution uh, involving church members. And in some places, we have the, ho the whole church, a local church, organizing a mission trip to a neighborhood or a city nearby to distribute uh, house to house, involving every church member. This is a big uh, point or um, important element involving church members in the distribution. Uh, this makes a difference because when I am involved in the distribution, I feel part of the mission. If I just send a book through mail, uh, well, I can send thousands and thousands of books if I have enough resources for that. So it just, just one person is involved in mission. But if you organize your church in a way that every church member takes a part, a distributed 20, 30 books, in 30 minutes only, you cover a territory, and you have everybody involved, and you have everybody excited by participating. So this is another aspect of the project I as even, well. I even seen um, people write their own phone numbers on each book. Mm -hmm. If you have any questions, contact me on, yeah. and then they give their phone number. Yeah, and some churches, they prepared a beautiful letter, introduction letter, inviting people to come, asking if people have any prayer requests, We'll offer a service as well. So this uh, becomes a approaching method to the neighborhood, distributing free books. Uh, I have seen other places of the world, they adopt the idea of promoting reading habits through the distribution of a book. So if that particular culture, they are not so uh, keen to read books, so the church raised up and say, we are promoting, the Seventh-day Adventist Church is promoting reading habits by distributing freely books to the population. So this makes an impact. That, that's the, a PR yeah, campaign yeah, right there. Yes, that's, that's true. Yeah, yeah. So I have seen uh, television uh, coming to interview our leaders and and uh, interview people that receive the book. It's, it's a way that the church brings a service to the community as well. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, what are you hoping to be accomplished by the end of next year? We talked about one billion books distributed both digitally and physically. Mm -hmm. Is there even a way to count? <laughs> it's. I think so. I think that we can count. Uh, our dream is to distribute one billion. Why? Because if you distribute one billion, you can reach most of the world territory and most homes. Uh, I think that this is uh, viable because we have 22 church members, 22 million church members. If each one of us distributed just one book per, per week, we would distribute one billion books in a year. Just one book per week, each one of mm -hmm. us. So it's, it's not complicated, it's possible. But uh, all of us need to be engaged in this program. Well, we, we pursue that. And why we pursue that? We are promoting translations and printing and distribution. And uh, as you mentioned, we, we have the digital format, and we also have the books on, on, on audio version as well. And some initiatives of producing videos, explaining book, and also uh, animations uh, with portions of the book. So many other initiatives that join the project, bringing different approaches to reach more people using different methods, as uh, we talked about, different methods for different types of cultures. But the message is the same. The essence is the same. And we aim to see millions and millions of people uh, contacting with the truth, and at least taking the opportunity to decide whether in favor or not in favor. Ellen White has a quote. She says that when we distribute a book such as The Great Controversy, some people, they will immediately take their position and they will join 
those who obey God's commandments. She says her words. But she adds, saying that a number much, much bigger than that will join the movement when they will see uh, taking place the events that the book uh, presents. So we know that the book presents the past, the present, and the future. When people see that uh, the developments of things that are forecast in the book, uh, the book is not a different prophecy from the Bible. The books explain Bible prophecies. So when people see that this is happening, they will take their position if they have opportunity to read the book, to know the book. This is an interesting point I've, I've realized only recently. The Adventist church's mission is not church growth. We have not been called for church growth. We have been called for proclaiming special messages, God's messages, to 8 billion people. There's a big difference there. Yes. If church growth was the goal, then we need to do something today for people to be converted today and become Adventists today, and that's the goal. Yeah. But as she pointed out, no, distribute the book, because at some point in the future, and what's interesting is this point in the future that she is describing, soon after that, we won't, we believe we won't be able to have a church anymore. Mm -hmm. Our brand will be gone. Our legal status will be gone. Yeah. And, and therefore, it sets very clearly that even from the first moment of Adventism, our goal isn't church growth, even though there are 160,000 plus congregations. Uh, there are Adventists around the world. That isn't the point. The point is that they can reach their own communities yes. so we can reach every human being faster and more efficiently in more mm -hmm. languages. Yeah. And Sam, there is one point that I want to emphasize. Um, at some point, we, we talked about why printed books um, I think that now we can understand why uh, the church has received so many instructions to invest in printing. Uh, printing is not the only way to proclaim the message, but it's an important alternative in a time that uh, we are at risk of uh, having our media communication canceled by the current culture. So... For example, television, internet, radio, they are fragile, more fragile to be canceled and to be censored. But uh, printed media, once they are distributed, is much difficult, much more difficult to eliminate. So that's why we should be involved in distributing as many printed books as we can, because there will be a time when all other methods will be silenced and books will be the only method speaking at that time. There is a permanence to books. Yes. Social media, all digital assets, it's, it's very temporal. Some time ago, uh, Facebook removed our Seventh-day Adventist World Church page. At the time, we had just under half a million followers. And one day, we got a notice that we violated their policy and they removed our page. We looked through every post and we could not find how we could possibly have violated any policy. On ads, organically, we, we were none the wiser. But for three weeks, they wouldn't reply. They said that they reviewed it and, and that was still the case, but they wouldn't say what we've done. They would not say, this is the post or this is what you did, just nothing. And we had not done anything differently then than we had done in previous years. Eventually, we found somebody who worked in Facebook who advocated for a manual review, and then the page was brought back to life. <laughs> and it showed the temporality of, this, um, of digital platforms. So, oh, but we could create our own digital platform on a website. One change of DNS, which is the mapping system between what you type and the actual computer that hosts our websites. Um, one little shift and that's it. No one can find you anymore. You're, you're done. So all the digital, for all the good 
for all the speed and the reach that digital can bring us, mm -hmm. it is very fragile. And it can go in one afternoon, we can be wiped of the face of the internet, which is a very scary thought. If you, if your mission is to proclaim things to 8 billion people. So the books that you are mentioning may play a really important role yes. as the events are being pointed out. And can you imagine if each household in the world had one of these books yeah. that the Holy Spirit could guide them to? Yes. Um, I see the point. And mm. it is a very alarming point. And people will accuse us of having conspiracy theories for the future and what have you. Uh, it's interesting that every persecution was once a conspiracy theory. Every yeah. time the church did its work, we were persecuted. We don't want this to happen, but we need to be prepared. Another thing that I want to talk about before we end our conversation is that many have created the myth of the irresistible church. What does that mean? They believe that our PR is the most important evangelistic tool that we could have. So if everybody loves what the church is doing, they will all become Seventh-day Adventists and, and they will, you know, dedicate their lives to our mission. I don't know where people got that from, but that was never the case with any church in the history of the last 2,000 years. Every time that the church did its job of proclaiming and, and standing up for truth, and truth as in Jesus, and Jesus is very controversial. The idea that Jesus is just a good teacher in the first century means that you haven't read Jesus. You know, he has some terrible things that he says. I am the truth, the way, and the life. Yeah. For instance, if Jesus is the truth, then nothing else is the truth, right? It's a very arrogant thing to say if he was just a teacher. It would only be appropriate if he is the son of God, as C.S. Lewis puts it. Um, how is it that he goes? Jesus is either a madman, comparable to a man who believes he's a poached egg, um, or a devil, or the Son of God. There's no alternative. He did not leave anything else open to us, the, the idea of him being a good teacher. So the myth of the irresistible church says, let's not distribute a book that will bring down the PR efforts of the Adventist church, the public relations efforts. If people are reading this book, we talk very openly about papal Rome, the Roman Catholic church being the beast of revelation. It's a very open, direct references with evidence, historical evidence for that claim. So, well, this is us distributing a book to, to millions and millions of people that directly position another denomination, mm -hmm. another belief system of, of uh, millions of people as, um, so it is a, 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 con a controversy about the great controversy. It mm -hmm. will put us in that position. How do you see this tension between PR and presenting biblical truth to the world? Well, Jesus said that he came to bring uh, separation. I mean, uh, the message is not so popular like many of us may think. The message being uh, brings points that are considered um, fundamental or fundamentalist, which is not so... Uh, popular today, you, you, if you say, I am fundamentalist. But we have fundamental. We have a base to, to, to present, which is the Bible. So if we believe in the Bible, uh, we should be bold enough to proclaim what the Bible says. Because the enemy is bold enough to proclaim what he's trying. Uh, he's, he, bold, he is bold enough to proclaim sin and deceit. He goes to every every place. He uses all methods, all media, all strategies that are available to present uh, deceit. And uh, what about us? We should present the clear word of God. 
we should not be afraid to present with love, with, uh, 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 with tolerance, but we should present what is uh, life in the Holy Scriptures. And the Great Controversy book is, is a book that uh, is open to, um, to discuss the issues, not only present some dogmas, without any point. Well, the books establish points along of history, point after point, history ab, uh, after history, and then presents the truth. Of course, if, if somebody reads the book from the beginning to the end, he or she will understand that. Uh, but of course, if you say up front, that the book declares that this and that uh, religion is false, it may shock. But if you read through the points, you may understand that this makes sense. Where can people find the book if they want to read it? Well, greatcontroversyproject.org. You can find the book available and in 128 language. Greatcontroversy.org or Great Controversy Project. You, you may choose. And this book is available there in 128 different languages. You can download it. You can even print it if you want, if you like. And of course, if you want a, a printed version, you can look for one of the publishing houses uh, website and you can uh, order from it. Or just go to Adventist Church. This is the missionary book of the year. It's supposed to be in our churches. Go to an Adventist church and ask for a free copy of the book. It is available there. Fantastic. Almir, thank you very much for talking to us. My privilege. And thank you for listening or watching to this episode of ANN In Depth. We finish here the publishing series of ANN In Depth. And in the next episode, we'll start a new series entirely in a different subject in a different direction. We hope that you enjoy these podcasts that are brought to you to help you understand how the Adventist Church works and how we think. If you are interested in becoming a Seventh-day Adventist, just go to Adventist.org and get in touch with us. We cannot wait to hear from you. Until then, don't forget to subscribe to this podcast wherever it is that you are listening to it, and we'll see you in the next episode.